In 2019, I updated my shack to be more organized, ergonomic, and efficient. Besides the interior changes, I also wanted to add a new antenna. I was looking for an omnidirectional antenna with a low radiation angle. I also wanted the ability to easily switch between HF bands, especially 40 and 20 meters. I knew I'd have a difficult time getting a horizontal wire high enough to achieve a low radiation angle, so I decided a vertical antenna would be right for me. My budget was $500. I live in a community with an HOA. Compared to other HOAs, the rules are fairly generous. Antennas are permitted as long as they can't be seen from the street. The XYL levied a few more constraints. No holes could be drilled through the siding. This meant all coax would need to be fished through the walls to the attic before heading outside through the soffit under the eaves. There also couldn't be any guy wires in the yard to run into. Lastly, and most importantly, was the antenna could not be unsightly. I guess not everyone agrees with my assertion that all antennas are beautiful in their own unique way. So I went online and started researching vertical antennas. First, I looked at commercial off-the-shelf products the venerable Butternut HF6V, the nicely reviewed Hustler 5B TV, the Kushcraft R8, the MFJ2389, the Diamond CP5H. These antennas were either outside of my budget or wouldn't fit into our backyard landscape. I soon realized that any antenna with traps, capacitor hats, elevated radials, or anything that resembled any sort of stereotypical antenna would not fit into our backyard aesthetics. One very popular stealth vertical antenna solution is to disguise the antenna as a flagpole. Commercial flagpoles were outside of my budget. I also realized any flagpole that I could build within my budget that was tall enough to be efficient on 40 meters would require guying. Then I started thinking outside the box. I mean, backyard. Why not use a tree? They are, after all, just nature's antenna mast. There are no large trees in the backyard. However, there are four 70-foot low bali pines in the front yard. Now that's tall enough. I figured I could chuck a wire in the tree, lay down a few radials, run a coax cable to an antenna tuner, and Bob's Jungle, I would have a multi-band vertical antenna. But could I beat the homeowners association restraint against antennas that can be seen from the street? For the coax cable, I settled on RG8X. The flexibility and relatively small diameter of the RG8X would make the job of fishing the wires through the walls and into the attic much easier than if I used a more efficient coax, such as LMR400. The coax run from the radio in my shack to the nearest tree would end up being 70 feet. I decided to go with an ICOM AH4 remote antenna tuner to reduce SWR-related coax losses and for its convenience. The H4 is specifically designed to automatically tune a random length long wire antenna and can tune from 3.5 to uh, 54 megahertz. This covers the 80 to 6 meter ham bands. It interfaces directly with ICOM ham radios. Since I use an ICOM IC7100 in the shack, tuning the H4 is accomplished by pressing a single button. My front yard is split into two sections by the walkway that leads to the front door. I chose to install the antenna in a tree in the foreground of this picture. This section of the yard is approximately 25 by 35 feet and is bounded by the driveway, sidewalk, and walkway. My plan was to screw the antenna tuner directly to the base of this tree. I would then throw a wire into the tree as high as I could get it. The coax and antenna tuner control wire would be ran from the house to the yard through an expansion gap in the walkway next to the house. Then an 8 inch trench would be dug from the walkway to the tree to hide the coax and control wire. A radial plate would be laid underneath the antenna tuner. And a 2 inch copper strap would connect the radial plate to the tuner ground connection. I would then run four radials from the radial plate to the corners of the yard, keeping the radials 2 feet from the edge of the grass so I wouldn't hit them with the string trimmer while edging the yard. These are the longest radials, at just over 20 feet. Two radials would have to be curved slightly to wrap around the tree. 
Another 18 radials would be laid down as symmetrically as possible around the base of the antenna for a total of 24 radials. These radials would be laid right on top of the lawn and secured with lawn staples. I've heard that grass would grow right over the radials, which would hide the radials as well as preventing people from tripping over them. Since this sounded much easier than tearing up the front lawn digging 24 trenches, I was willing to give this method a try. I waited until December when the grass was completely dormant and mowed the lawn very short. That way I could get the radials as close to the dirt as possible so that in the spring the grass would be able to grow right over them. Using a wrist mounted fishing reel and a slingshot I was able to quickly shoot a 2 ounce sinker over a limb that was over 40 foot high. I did this at the crack of dawn before the neighbors could have a chance to go outside and see me. They would have probably wondered if I've gone mad and started fishing for squirrels. Once I got the fishing line over the limb I wanted, I tied on some strong but lightweight mason line and pulled that over. Then I tied brown paracord onto the mason line and pulled that over. 14 gauge insulated wire was tied to the paracord and lifted 40 foot vertically into the tree. The end of the vertical wire is about 4 feet from the trunk of the tree. The excess paracord was secured to a cleat that I attached to the tree. That way, I have enough paracord left over that I can fully lower the antenna to raise it again. Brown paracord blended into the tree much better than black or camo paracord. I dug a trench for the coax and control cable to the tuner and attached the radio plate to the tuner with a 2 inch copper strap. 24 radials were attached to the radio plate and fanned out across the lawn. The radials were made from the same 14 gauge insulated wire that was used for the antenna. Green terminals were crimped on one end of the wire so they could be bolted onto the radio plate. Since the radio plate is aluminum, I coated each connection with antioxidant dielectric grease, specifically made for aluminum to copper connections. Each radio was pinned to the ground with four to eight six inch galvanized steel garden staples. The sum total of all the parts of this antenna came out to be $456.79, not including tax, which is slightly below my original budget of $500. This antenna design allows me to operate on all ham bands from 80 meters to 6 meters with an SWR of less than 1.5 to 1. The antenna operates best on 40 meters and higher, which is expected since the length of the antenna is just a little greater than a quarter wavelength on 40. I've worked both phone and digital contacts on 80 meter. However, I get a lot of noise on that band and voice contacts are a struggle. This antenna is definitely a compromise antenna. The AH4 could probably tune a wet noodle. My antenna functions on multiple bands. However, the low SWR at the radio is hiding the losses that are incurred at the tuner. I have 24 radios and I'm lucky that the soil in Houston acts as a good ground. Although I'm happy with the number of radios, most of them average around 15 feet, with the four longest wires slightly over 20. This length is quite a bit shorter than a quarter wavelength on any band below 20 meters. Even in December when the grass was still dormant and hadn't had a chance to grow over the radials, they were pretty invisible. The radials were most visible near the radio plate where the grass was very thin. By July, the grass had completely covered the radials. Even I am hard pressed to find them. The grass has also covered most of the radio plate. The copper strap has patinaed and blends nicely in with the trunk. From the street, the antenna tuner hides nicely behind the tree. Most importantly, I haven't received a letter from the HOA telling me to pull the antenna down. I would call that a success for now. And that's it. Thanks for watching.